Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm looking at recurrence relations. I'll start by showing you what they are and then work through three exam style questions. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper and work through this yourself, pausing the video as you need. I hope this is helpful. Please do let me know how you get on in the comments below and don't hesitate to get in touch, starfishmaths at gmail.com if you'd like any information about online tuition or small group masterclasses. If you're ready, let's get started. Okay, here we have our first recurrence relation. And a recurrence relation is just a way of describing a set of numbers. Um, and it uses a format like this. So first you're given the first term here, that's three. Um, and then you're given a relationship that tells you how to generate the other numbers in the sequence. So generally we use a letter like U or A or X with little numbers next to it. So one stands for the first term, then U2 would be the second term, U3 the third term, and so on. Um, then we're given u of n plus 1 is u of n, so that's a general formula, so n takes on different numbers, and we can use that to generate the next one. So if we let n be 1, uh, first of all, and put that in there, then u of 1 plus 4 would give us u of n plus 1. If n is 1, then n plus 1 is 2, so that gives us u2, and that's the second term of the sequence. So u1 here is 3, so plusing 4 to that we get a 7. So the second term of the sequence is 7. Let's walk through another one to get u3. u3, the third term, that would be when n is 2, so that n, of n plus 1 is 3, um, and we're adding 4 still. So u2 is 7, and plus 4 is 11 and it's probably easy to see that this is just saying take the previous term and add 4 to it in order to get the next term along. So you'll keep adding 4. So the sequence goes 3, 7, 11 and the next one will be 15. So if that's our sequence, 3, 7, 11, 15, um, you're probably already familiar with the nth term. So for this one that would be 4n minus 1. Um, so that's one sequence generator you're probably already used to, which you can find for this sequence easily. Um, so this is just another way to describe that. But as you'll see in other examples, a recurrence relation is really powerful, a uh, different way of doing it, because it can then describe some more complex sequences, which would be really difficult to get using the nth term. OK, let's look at another one now. Okay, here we have another sequence, um, and I didn't say in the last one, but um, you tend to get a little inequality here just to make sure that n is whole numbers that are positive, because we don't want the zeroth term or a negative term, and we just want 1, 2, 3, 4. In the last one it was straightforward. This one is a slightly different setup. I'm using n minus 1 rather than n plus 1 on that side. So because we're doing n minus 1, the inequality is greater than 2, because 2 minus 1 would be 1. So this one's slightly different because um, it's just another way round of talking about the consecutive numbers. Um, so here to get u2, then we let n be 2 and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So can you see? It works the same way, it's just a slightly different way of describing it. So here we are doubling the first term and subtracting 1. So 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 3. Let's do u3 as well. 2 lots of u2 minus 1, which is 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 5. We'll do one more. Do have a go at this yourself. So this time we've got the sequence is 2, 3, 5, 9, and so on. Um, just looking at that, um, the difference is 1, 2, 4. Um, that would be really difficult to get the nth term of that one. So that's a good example of where the recurrence relation keeps it nice and easy. OK, I hope that's making sense. Practice those a bit more if not. Otherwise, we're going to look at three questions that just play with the recurrence relations a little bit more in depth. 
Okay, here we've got more of an exam style question um, and these could be very high end GCC or A level standard. So here we've got a recurrence relation um, and it's got an unknown letter P in it and we're given the third term is 31 and asked to find P. So we've got A1, let's find A2 and then from there we can find A3. So N here can be 1 so that N plus 1 is 2. So we're going to have P times A1 plus 3, and I'll just carry on, P times 1 is just P, so that's our second term, and we can find A3, so using that as our A2, so it's going to be P multiplied by, um, I hope you're happy, um, if I could write A2, but I'm just going to skip that step just to save some, some space obviously include that if you need to so our A2 here is P plus 3 and then adding 3 at the end okay then we can multiply out the brackets and we get that then we know what this equals so we can set up an equation because it equals 31 and here we have a quadratic equation to solve. So hopefully you know what to do. Take this onto that side and set it equal to zero. And if you need to brush up on quadratics, I've got more videos on that. You've got a choice of how to solve quadratics. I think I'll factorise. Um, so p plus seven and p minus four. I've run out of space on the bottom but hopefully you can see that that would be give us two solutions of minus seven or four. Great, well done if you got that, if not maybe rewind and have another go yourself. Okay, now here I've used some new notation again. I think that recurrence relations, this topic, um, the maths isn't too difficult um, but if you've not seen them before the notation just takes a little bit of getting used to doesn't it? Um, so here's a new bit again of notation, I don't know if you've seen it before. This um, is a Greek letter, this squiggle, it's sigma, um, and it means um, add the terms up. So R here is going to take on the values 1 all the way up to 4, so 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we're going to get R of 1, R2, R3 and R4 and add them together, that's, that's what that means. So we're going to get X1 and add X2 all the way up to 4. So clearly we need to use a recurrence relation to generate these terms. So here n is 2 and then n minus 1 will give us our x1 and then we've got a letter we don't know so we can just leave that there. x1 I'll replace that, uh, we know it's 2 and then we can just tidy that up so we've got 3 plus 3m. Three x3, three, do have a go at this. So we've got our previous term and then plus another 3m plus 1 and tidy that up again. And then x4. Okay, now we can do our sum. So that's going to be our x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, so that's um, 2 plus all of these. I'm not going to write it all out, I'm just going to add them up as we go. So I'll add the m terms first, um, so that would be 18m. And the numbers I get 14. Fab, hope that made sense, let's look at one more question. Okay, here we have our last question and I wanted to include one like this because um, it's a little bit different again. This time the recurrence relation is using two of the previous terms. Um, so a really famous example of a sequence like that is the Fibonacci sequence. Um, I really hope you've seen it. Um, it starts off with, you always have to be given the first two terms and then um, the Fibonacci sequence is to just add those previous two terms. So you get two, then add them to get three, add them to get 5, um, 8 um, and so on. 
and this is a really beautiful sequence because it comes up in nature an awful lot describing things like patterns in nature sunflowers insect wings all sorts it's pine cones really really beautiful stuff i'll try and link a video about that if i can so this one we've got here is just like the fibonacci add the previous two but then also take off one so let's have a go at that okay so let's start with finding you three so that's using the previous two terms adding together and then taking off one so we've got those that's um four and two taking off one we get five and then u4 would be the previous two and take off one so that would be five and four take off one you get eight I'll just write the sequence up here so we've got more space. And now we can finish the question. So we're asked for the um, sum again using sigma 1 to 4. This time I put in a squared just to make it more exciting. <laughs> so we can um, work that out. This means to square them all and add them up. So we're going to be doing 2 squared plus 4 squared and so on. My calculator tells me that is 109. Um, and just to clarify, that is different from if you were doing this. So just um, where you put the squared makes a big difference because this means to add them all up and then square it afterwards. So that would be adding these up, which gets you 19, and then squaring that answer. 361 so yeah just to be careful about where the squared happens well I hope that was helpful and gave you a flavor for some different things you can do with recurrence relations keep practicing different questions and have fun thank you so much for watching